central banks around the world have been increasing interest rates to combat inflation. With increased interest rates, more people will save, less people will spend, and companies and individuals that already have debt, such as corporate debt or mortgages, will now have higher interest rates. And with these higher interest rates, the focus will be on paying these higher rates, not on spending more. All of this will lead to lower consumer spending, cause a slowdown in our economy, and will reduce the value of our companies around the world. Well, this reduction has already started, and the world's biggest investors have been affected. Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund, which has over a 70% weight in public equities and no allocation of private equity, was drastically affected by the drop in the public markets. In fact, it lost over 14% in the first half of 2022. Now, other large investors around the world, including other sovereign wealth funds and pension funds, have also been affected by the slowdown. But many of their portfolios haven't dropped as much as Norway's sovereign wealth fund. Why do you think that is? Well, many of these large investors have sizable allocations to private investments, such as private equity, and the value of private equity holdings haven't fallen as much as public equities. Now, wait a second. The slowdown in the economy affects all businesses, whether they're publicly owned or privately owned. So why do you think private equity holdings haven't fallen as much as public equities? That's right. Private equity valuations are stickier than public equity valuations. A private equity fund values its portfolio companies usually every three months, while in the public markets, every day the market opens, stocks trade up and down. And when there is negative market sentiment, well, the market can fall very quickly. And so, when large investors, such as sovereign wealth funds and pension funds, hold both private equity and public equities, when the public markets fall quickly, like they did in early 2022, and if the private equity investments take a while to reflect their true value, the investors' portfolios that hold more private assets as a percentage of the portfolio will most likely show less of a drop or even a gain in their portfolios. Now, there is something else that will happen when there is a large drop in public equities and only a small drop or no drop in private equity. Can you guess what that is? That's right. It's the denominator effect, the title of this video. The denominator effect occurs in a portfolio when one asset class in a portfolio, in this case, public equities, drastically decreases and results in an increased allocation to another asset class that did not decrease or marginally decreased, in this case, private equity. So a pension fund that may have a 19% allocation to private equity could now have a 24% allocation to private equity, even if the private equity holdings didn't increase. Now, this is not a big problem unless the pension fund has a restrictive mandate to keep its private equity exposure as a specific percentage of the total portfolio. In this example, if the pension fund has a mandate to keep its private equity exposure between 15 and 20%, and the private equity exposure goes up to 24%, well, the pension may be forced to sell some of its private equity holdings at a big discount to achieve the fund's target exposure. Now, here's a final thought. Back in 2008, during the financial crisis, some institutional investors were forced to sell private equity fund commitments at steep discounts on the secondary markets and incurred huge losses just to maintain the investor's predetermined range of its private equity exposure. Investors, if you have a portfolio that has a decent exposure to private assets with lagging valuations, 
This can cause your portfolio allocations to appear distorted sometimes. Please give yourself flexibility in how you allocate your assets and don't set restrictive mandates. With extra flexibility, you'll be able to use judgment, use common sense, and avoid selling assets at deep discounts to satisfy predetermined mandates like many investors were forced to do back in 2008.